In my next life, I'm gonna be a jewelry designer. I love jewelry. I've got some of my pieces here. I've got gold, silver, some diamonds, and some costume jewelry. And in this video, I wanna go over how to clean your jewelry properly so that you are taking the best possible care of it, so that your jewelry absolutely dazzles, shines, sparkles, makes people jealous, etc., and so that you can stretch as much life out of your jewelry as possible. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, and you can also sign up for the Dirty Dish newsletter. I've got a link for that down below. We include cleaning tips and information that you will not find anywhere else in the Clean My Space sphere. We don't send tons of emails out. It is definitely worth a sign up. Again, that link down below. When you're cleaning your jewelry, there are a few things you wanna take into consideration so that you don't ruin the jewelry. The first thing is how the products that you are going to use can potentially react to the metals or the materials that your jewelry has. Second, you wanna think about the tools that you're using and how those may cause damage to the pieces that you have. And third, you wanna think about regular ongoing maintenance for these pieces, what's needed and what you can kind of avoid. And then there's always that subjective piece, like how often do I wanna clean my jewelry so that it shines and sparkles, but on the flip side, I have to put an effort into it. Do I really wanna do that? So I'm gonna leave that all with you, but I'm here to just give you the information and show you how it's done. You do not need to go and get an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner. You do not need to go and get a jewelry cleaning pen. You can do everything you need to do jewelry cleaning wise with a cleaning toothbrush, dish soap, aluminum foil, baking soda, hot water, and perhaps a little bit of rubbing alcohol. We'll start with gold. That's simple and kind of the gold standard, if you will, for jewelry. So I'm gonna move everything else out of the way. Don't worry, we'll cover it all. Now, what's interesting about gold is that 24 karat gold is pure gold, but then anything less than 24 karat, so 18, 14, 10, etc., means that the gold has been mixed with other metals. Now, when you're dealing with a mix of other metals, you might not know what those metals are, and then you worry that potentially those metals can react with cleaning products. That's why I don't like to use anything too acidic or, you know, some people I've seen, they'll say, oh yeah, I use laundry detergent. Why would you ever do that? You don't know what your gold really contains. So that's why I'm sticking with this simple stuff. This is just Dawn. I know I had to take the label off. Long story, but anyway, this is just Dawn, blue dish soap, and you are gonna put a little squirt of Dawn, maybe half a teaspoon, into a bowl filled with water, and you're just gonna soak your piece of jewelry. Now, what's great about Dawn, or any dish soap, but again, I really say this is the best one, it's a very powerful surfactant, its job is to lift dirt, grease, grime, etc., from the surface. So when you're wearing gold and you kind of wear it every day, like this is a piece of jewelry I would wear every day or my gold earrings or rings, you know, they just pick up gunk. They get hand cream, cosmetics, sunscreen, like body oil, sweat, all of that stuff just builds up, cakes on, and it starts to leave a film or a residue that just dulls the shine and the brilliance of the piece. So really by soaking it in dish soap and water, the surfactant is gonna do what it needs to do to clean your jewelry beautifully. You don't really have to do much more than that aside from get yourself a cleaning toothbrush. And you'll notice here, this is for a child and that's because they have quite delicate gums and it is perfect for jewelry cleaning as well. Now, why I'm choosing a toothbrush over a pen or a cotton swab is because we've got multiple bristles that are very flexible and can get into those little teeny tiny nooks and crannies. Okay, I'm just gonna do this live. Normally we prep everything, but I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna grab some water. So you see, I don't have tons. And I'm gonna put a tiny little squirt of dish soap in there, nothing crazy. So that like half a teaspoon. And then in my jewelry goes. This would be great too for earrings, rings, anything like that. Let's say I've given it 10 minutes. I haven't, but let's say I did. You'll feel the piece is a little bit slippery. That's a good sign. That means it's got surfactant on it, which is soap, which means dirt can be lifted from the surface. And then you're just gonna do your toothbrushing like so. And you should notice, you know, I'm looking at this bracelet and I'm seeing in the nooks and crannies, it's like a dark, look at this, it's dark. You can see it on the toothbrush there, how that dirt gets there. But by the time this job is done, 
this bracelet is going to look so much more brilliant and bright and sparkly. Now for a job like this, I might consider doing this once a month because I'm lazy. If I really cared about my pieces and I had tons of time, maybe I would do this once every couple of weeks or once a week, or if you have your own butler, maybe you can get them to do it for you once a week. But generally speaking, this is something uh, I could probably do more often. And it's not gonna hurt your jewelry in any way because you're using a gentle product and a gentle tool and a gentle technique. Now why someone might want to get an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner is because it is quite effective at cleaning your jewelry. The thing that you have to be mindful of with ultrasonic is that because it uses steam, it's not safe for all pieces, which is why I kind of like a one size fits all approach. Also, it's, it's an expensive endeavor, you know, just to buy a little piece. Like you're not a professional jeweler. I mean, maybe you are if you're watching this, but for the average person, myself included, we're not professional jewelers, like we don't need the professional equipment. So now this is soapy, I'm gonna go give this a rinse and then we're gonna dry it with a flat weave microfiber cloth. That really does look beautiful. You'll know it's done when you feel the piece and it's not slippery anymore. That means you've gotten all the soap, all the surfactant off. And look at that. Using this flat weave microfiber cloth, I'll put a link to this one, this is a maker's cloth. Um, it really polishes the piece up, gets rid of any of that excess buildup, and it's beautiful and ready and good to go. Now, if there was a little bit of water left behind, you could always just roll it up, whoops, in your cloth, or you can use a blow dryer just to blast away any excess moisture, but just be careful, metal conducts heat. Now in the realm of jewelry, which I've already told you is like one of my favorite topics, my favorite thing to talk about in that topic is diamonds. And right here I have four pieces that have diamonds. One has, oops, channel set diamonds. One is sort of like a pavé. One is sort of like a channel set again. And then one of course is an engagement ring. So I would say the most complicated is the engagement ring. And I really want to get a close up because what happens with these engagement rings over time, especially if you have an open basket down here, which means the diamond is open at the bottom, you're wearing your ring all the time. And again, like hand cream, soap, sunscreen, cosmetics, hair products, body oils, dead skin cells, all this stuff that just normally happens in your life gets caked on and blocks the dazzle, blocks the shine, the brilliance of your diamond. Like why would you, lock the dazzle. So what you can do again is use the exact same technique that we used for gold, nothing more than dish soap and water. That being said, I am going to change this water out because it looks disgusting. All right, so I'm going to add the same amount, just a little squirt. And then what you can do is pop all your pieces in. Now, something I want to talk about with these smaller diamond rings or diamond pieces that you might have is you might not notice that the diamonds look dirty because they're small and they're sort of set in place. But there is a huge difference if you've ever noticed the before and after when you clean a piece like this because you can't quite see what's clogging it up, but trust me, it makes a huge difference after this has been cleaned. Give it a stir with our high-tech cleaning tool. And I will mention one thing. This is a great time when you're cleaning to inspect the setting of your diamond pieces. Um, generally speaking, it should be fine, but every now and then if you notice a loose setting, you're gonna wanna talk to your jeweler because trust me, you do not wanna deal with a lost diamond insurance claim. The other, other thing I will tell you is that right now I'm cleaning these far away from a sink or a toilet or anything with a drain. Uh, they're in a self-contained bowl. That said, if you are going to be doing this over or near a sink, please, for the love of God, make sure you plug the sink. I want to mention before we pull these out of the bowl that this technique is safe for both fracture-filled diamonds as well as lab diamonds. All right, so these have been soaking for about 30 minutes. We actually paused filming to pick Riley up from school. And the first thing I'm going to do is pull out the diamond ring and I will start scrubbing in the bowl or just over the bowl, dipping into that soapy water, using the toothbrush. And again, the toothbrush, what I love about it is that it can really get into those 
quote unquote nooks and crannies. Now let's say you were coming home from work and you just wanted a quick and easy thing to do. You can fill a bowl with water and a bit of dish soap and just soak it for 30 minutes and just rinse it. You don't even have to do the toothbrush thing. And even that alone would make a difference. But let's polish this up. And we of course know that this technique is safe for gold, which is the base of this ring. And you can see how stunning and sparkly it is and how all of that gunk is now gone from the bottom of the diamonds where it used to be. I'll hold it that way. And you'll notice it just looks completely transformed, clean and sparkly. Don't look at my wretched nails, please. Focus on the ring, not the nails. All right, and now for one of these little eternity bands, it's very much the same. You're just gonna do a brush and you're gonna work your way around the piece. Just gonna dip it into the water, dry it. And again, you can see how nice and shiny this one looks too. Rinse them in water. And even that just looks so great. And with this particular ring, I get a lot of buildup over here in this little scalloped edge and underneath as well. So just soaking in that soapy water made a huge difference. Let's talk about costume jewelry. I have tons of costume jewelry and it is fun to wear. However, because costume jewelry can be made so many different ways and have so many different components, whether it's, you know, beads or gems that aren't necessarily real, the metals that are used can be totally different qualities that can affect how the jewelry performs over time, which is why when you pick up your piece of jewelry, make sure that you read the care tag and you follow the instructions to the letter. So for example, a piece like this came with a care tag and it said, just use a microfiber cloth and a little bit of water. So when I need to clean this piece, that's what I do, but I always make sure it's dry. And one thing I really like to do for my costume jewelry is give it a blowout after so that there is no residual moisture. So that there is no residual moisture. Now what you might notice on some pieces of costume jewelry, like for example, these earrings that I've had for a few years now, that these are from J. Crew, like many, many years ago. You might notice that there's a bit of this green building up on the side or by the backing there. And this happens because of exposure to your body as well as exposure to air and moisture. It's nothing necessarily to worry about. It's just something you have to clean regularly. So you can see I'm just using a cotton pad here and kind of getting in there with my wretched nails right now. We can just laugh at them. That's fine. And then if I want to give these a cleaning, what I might do is just polish them with a dry microfiber cloth. I can already tell that using water on these would ruin them just based on their finish. It's not good quality. And if I wanted to clean the backing, it would be at that point that I could use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I just have a spray here and I'm just going to quickly spritz it and then I can use my cloth or this little cotton round to wipe it dry. You are probably familiar with costume jewelry that looks like this. And these pieces are adorable, but they are not good quality. And I'm going to show you what I mean. This bracelet is about a year old and you can look at the edge of the beads. This bracelet is about a year and a half old and you can look at the edge of the beads. It was gold as well and you can see just how much it's aged. Now I don't shower with these. I take them off when I'm doing sports or anything active so that I don't get sweat on them but you know just over time from wearing them the color starts to fade. So these would definitely not be exposed to water or rubbing alcohol. If anything, you can use a dry microfiber cloth just to buff them clean. But I would recommend for all costume jewelry, removing it anytime you are showering, bathing, swimming, or doing anything that's sweaty, or even if you're you know, cleaning or doing something where you're gonna be washing your hands regularly, 
you want to make sure that this jewelry is not on because it's going to age quicker. Now we're going to talk through silver cleaning and I'm going to show you like the party trick of all party tricks when it comes to cleaning jewelry. So for this job, you are going to need a bowl, some tin foil. By the way, let me know in the comments, do you call it tin foil or aluminum foil? Or if you're in the UK, aluminum foil. And you're just going to line your bowl with the tin foil, aluminum foil. Then you're gonna sprinkle in some baking soda like this. Probably getting about a tablespoon in there. So I've got this tarnished bracelet here. I haven't worn this in ages. Actually, it's cute. I should maybe wear it again. Anyway, I'm gonna put it here in the bowl. And then I am going to add the boiling water. And in a second, Chad's gonna come over with the camera and you will see the chemical reaction that's happening and how that water starts to allow the baking soda to fizz and bubble and break down that tarnish. Kind of smells too, like you get that metallic smell. And after just a couple of minutes, you will notice that your piece comes out really, really clean. Thank you. So obviously it's boiling hot, but you can see even after just a moment how nice this comes out. And I'm going to polish with the cloth just one of the charms. And you can already see what a difference it has made. And it just pops, like it absolutely dazzles. Now, here's the thing with silver. Due to the nature of the metal, as it gets exposed to oxygen and moisture, it oxidizes. So it tarnishes and that is true for all silver. So this is just a part of life. If you're someone who likes silver jewelry, this is something you're going to have to do. It doesn't mean you're a bad person or that you're not taking good care of your silver. It is literally a fact of life for silver. All right, well, don't mind if I do. I'm going to adorn myself in my freshly cleaned pieces because they look so nice. And you know, I'd love to know in the comments down below, are you someone who would prefer to have an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner or use one of those pens? Or what do you think about these methods? Is this something that you're going to try or transition to now that you see how it's done and how well it works? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, also, let me know if you are a gold person or a silver person and how you feel about diamonds. Let me know all your thoughts. I'm obsessed with jewelry. I, well, we already talked about this, but I'd love to know where you're at in the comments down below. If you wanna learn more easy cleaning techniques, you can check out this video right over here and do us a favor, if you liked this video, like the video. It really feeds the algo and makes a big difference for the Clean My Space channel. So please like the video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.